Hey everyone, welcome back to Casey 3D Sparks. So last week we went ahead and made this cool little jack-o'-lantern. And if you haven't seen it, I did post on Instagram the result of the 3D print. It came out really well. So this week, the day before Halloween, happy Halloween everyone, we are going to change this into a monster that we can use on our campaigns. There's a couple ways we can do this. So one way I'm gonna show you real quick is one that I just kind of, I took the stem and I just extended it out so it has one vine kind of being a loop. So this could be like a mini one or something like that. Basically, you just take it, extrude it back and rotate it. I'm sure you could, if you want to make it follow a curve, if you want it to be precise, but I just extruded and added loops and just had a little bit of fun with it. So there's different ways you could do that, but I thought that was kind of cool. Just thought I'd show you guys. Not sure how it's going to print. I'd probably have to lay it on its side or something to print properly so there's not like a ton of scaffolding. But I just want to show you guys like a different option instead of what we're about to do, which we will go back to the original pumpkin before we duplicated it to make it the jack-o'-lantern. So we have our loops here for the stem and everything. And we're going to change this so it actually has four vines sprouting out and they kind of become like spider leg looking. Basically, to do that, I want this to be a little bit thicker. So what I'm going to do is just alt right click this loop here. We're going to do X and collapse the, or get rid of that edge loop. I'm just bring this back down. And we're also going to do X edge loops to get rid of that one as well. So we have a bit of a bigger base to start with. And then we're just gonna go ahead and hit E to extrude and draw that up kind of like how we had before and then sharpen that edge by doing shift E again. Okay, so pretty much back to where we were and you can also resharpen these edges as well. Okay, now once we have that Go ahead and select all of these and just kind of take a look and kind of get a feel for how you want your legs to come out. So I'm going to be doing four legs. I'm sure you guys could do more if you wanted to. So I'm going to probably have one leg coming from here and the other just, you know, split down the middle and then the other side will just mirror. So to do that, I'm going to uncheck clipping for now and kind of split it in the middle-ish. So grab... Let's switch to edges. All of those. And of course you'll need these as well. Looks good to me. I'm just gonna hit E to extrude, pull that up and out a little bit. And we'll go ahead and get our other legs started as well. So we'll grab all of these. E to extrude up and out to make sure it's separated and go ahead and reapply clipping before we forget and then everything comes apart okay so now you kind of want to get your base all set again so basically you could leave this in the shape if you wanted but then you'll have like a completely smooth side and then you have the regular ripples so I'm going to go into top view and kind of just move these vertices about to reshape and make it look like these are actually individual vines again. Pull it out. Make it look a little bit rounder again. No pressure for making it perfect. It's vine. We're going to rotate them a bunch anyway and not take everything too seriously. Just make sure it looks, you know, okay. And I do want the edges to be flat. Since they're going to be legs, it's going to, you know, they're not going to make feet or anything. But I want it to be somewhat stable um, when we set it on our tabletops. So basically, I'm just going to go into wireframe view. Grab this, do SZ0 to make it completely flat, and we'll probably have to redo that once we get it all rotated and everything. Um, but just for starters, we're just gonna do SZ0 for that one as well to make sure it's all hopefully going to look 
like a monster at the end that can actually stand on our tables when we put them in our campaign. So now that we have that started, I'm just gonna hit E to extrude, grab that out, gonna rotate it. Gonna get this started, E to extrude again. Pull that down, E to extrude. Rotate it. And one more time, I'm probably gonna bring it down. Gonna be a little tall. All right, we'll probably pull that out. And just reshape it a little bit. I'm gonna sharpen this so that way it is flat. And I'll probably sharpen these a little bit, probably not all the way, to make it look more like a joint instead of just uh, kind of rounded there. But not completely sharp. I don't want it to be pointy. Probably more like that. Still a nice curve, but a little bit better. Probably gonna rotate this a little bit. Pull it out. And pull this out. This is where we can start editing our base a little more to make it look like it's actually sprouting out and not totally odd. Okay. Maybe I'll make it a little bit wider. Cool, so there's our first one. Now for the rear legs, I'm gonna pull them back and out a little bit more. But to start, I'm gonna pull them just straight back to get the rotation correct, and then I'll probably rotate them this way to be landing more around here. Okay, so let's go into side view. Need to extrude, grab that, rotate it. Need to extrude, rotate. Pull it down. E, grab it, rotate it. And then to make sure that they are on the same level, we'll go ahead and go into wireframe view, border select SZ zero. So now they're completely flat. Shift E to sharpen that. And I'll add another loop here. And I'm probably gonna bring this out more like that. I'm gonna go into top view. So that way I can grab the whole leg and this loop as well. Whoops, top view and we're gonna rotate that. But if you just start to rotate, obviously it's not gonna rotate the way we want it to. So you are gonna have to go here and we're gonna switch to 3D cursor and rotate along that way. It's about there, looks pretty good. But we will have to move this loop back to match a little bit better. Maybe about there. That looks good. And I might even Switch back to medium point and rotate it like that too. There we go, that looks better. And then we can go back in, adjust the base if we need to, which definitely looks like we need to fix this vertice here. Pull that out, make it a little bit thicker.
Awesome. Okay. So probably not the scariest monster that your NPCs or PCs have ever encountered, but definitely still something a little bit more surprising and a little bit more fun, I suppose, um, for your campaign. So let's go ahead and see how we would rig this. So I'm going to tab out of edit mode and duplicate it in case if I ever want to make changes. Um, and I just realized I made that to my original pumpkin. So I'm going to go back and just leave this as my duplicate and go back to the actual pumpkin itself and see if I can undo all of those changes, which I have my rate really high. So hopefully should be able to. Yep. Okay. So I was able to do most of the changes. It's just that part that didn't get undone. That's totally fine with me. I'm fine with that. So pumpkin, pretty much the original. So this one, we're going to go ahead and duplicate. So that way we still have that version. And this will be the one that we can apply both of our modifiers to and start creating a rake for. So we're going to go ahead and hit shift A, mash, nope, <laughs> armature, single bone. Now it's pretty tiny and you'll notice we can't see it just like before. We'll go over here to the armature and click x-ray. That way we can see it, but we also know that it's actually still inside of the pumpkin itself. So with this bone, um, I'm going to go ahead and make it larger. So we'll go ahead, pull that up, make it so it touches the bottom of this. And we'll go ahead and just tab into edit mode for the bone itself and pull it up to about here, right into the stem. Looks pretty good. And I'm going to go into the side view and actually that's perfect. Cool. So let's start by making this front here, this front leg here. And also I'm going to open up this menu by hitting N and that way we can rename our bones as we go along. So this one is going to be head. Perfect. Which if you've seen the last videos about rigging, um, this is more important when you're painting weights and doing actual animating and stuff. Uh, but again, it's just a good habit to whenever you're creating a rig, even, you know, if you're just like, oh, I'm just going to do this real quick, just rename it. It, you know, that way you always have that habit. Okay, grabbing this and we're going to hit E to extrude and just go out this way. However, I don't want this connected, so I'm going to select the whole bone here. Now we're going to hit Alt P, disconnect bone, and then you'll notice you can grab it and it still has that dotted line so you know it's still parented. We're going to rotate it, actually going to pull this back down a little bit. And I'm going to grab this end, grab that and pull it up to here. Now obviously if you want your bones to be a little bit more fluid, um, you can make this a lot more detailed. Or if you want to at least pull this up to here and you know you like, okay, well, I want this to be more detailed, you can grab the whole bone, do W and subdivide and keep subdividing until you're happy and just pull it into place. Um, but I'm just going to do this as one whole bone and see how I like it before I get too crazy detailed with it. And then you pull this up here. See more like that. So whenever you're creating an armature, make sure you always, always, always look at every direction before you apply. Because once you apply, um, it's stuck and you have to, before you can, you know, if you decide to make changes later on, you'll have to unapply it and just, you know, it's always best to get your rig right the first time rather than doing it, posing it a whole bunch, and then worrying about how many undos and stuff you have. So E to extrude, pull that all the way down. Actually, that worked out. And one more to go all the way down here, like that. 
So I'm just going to do F for front, like one, F like two, F like three. Now, what I'm gonna do, since this leg is the exact mirror of this leg, I'm just gonna hit Shift D and hit escape so it stays there. And then I'm going to move it over. It's about there, nowhere really in particular, just to kind of get it all over that leg. Then we're gonna hit Control M, X, Enter. And pull that over to match. Out there. Yep. That works for that side and that will automatically put the 0.001 on there so you don't have to worry about renaming it to two or anything like that unless you really want to um, so I didn't really have to do that or change the names unless you really want to but I'm not going to so what we can do next is do side view E to extrude and it's gonna pull that up grab the bone alt P disconnect bone Grab it, grab that, go on a top view, pull that over, pull this over, maybe not that far. <laughs> this one, pull it back some more. Need to extrude, pull it down to that point. Okay, and then E to extrude. Pull that down. Okay. So I'll rename that real quick. R leg one. Whoops. R leg two. R leg three. Shift D, hit escape, pull that over, control M, X, enter. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to tab back into object mode. I'm going to select my mesh first, shift and right click the armature, control P, and we're just going to do automatic weights. Let it think for a second. Okay. Now, you'll want to go ahead and go into pose mode and test it out. So that way, if you decide you want more bones, which I'm about to see if I want to add more bones or not, um, you can go back, do control Z really easily and uh, disconnect your armature. So let's go ahead. That's working good. Yes, I can go this way. This moves the whole thing, perfect. Awesome. So now we can pose our armature really easily. But also, before you print him out, when you export him as your STL, I mean, obviously I made him in inches, so I'll have to convert him to millimeters. But when you do that, you'll want to either duplicate it or whatever. So that way, when you apply the armature by going into your modifiers tab, applying the armature will apply the pose itself. So that way when you export the SDL, it will be in the pose that you want him to be. So don't forget to do those two steps. Very, very important. Um, also, don't forget to like and subscribe. And then don't forget to comment with any tips or tricks or what you guys want to see next time um, or just any kind of um, questions, that kind of thing. Really appreciate any feedback.
And then I will see you guys next week.